Coming up, Nano Server, the new headless deployment option for Windows Server 2016. We take a look at how it gives you the lightest and fastest option with significantly fewer patches and reboots, customizing Nano Server for your next generation apps, and your management options. So I'm joined by a man that needs no introduction. Jeffrey Snover, the architect of NanoServer. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be back here on The Mechanics. So what is NanoServer and what are we solving for here? Yeah, the cloud is really transforming the way we develop applications to be more distributed, componentized, and run as microservices. As a result, everything needs to be smaller, lighter, faster weight, and consume fewer resources. To illustrate, compare NanoServer with the full desktop experience. Uh, here is Server with the desktop. Uh, this has all the components, uh, the graphical user interface. This is the best option for small to medium businesses or for remote desktop experience. But what if you don't need the desktop? That's what Server Core is about. Server Core, what we've done is we've removed the Windows Shell, Internet Explorer, local GUI management. Uh, these are the components that consume a lot of resources and are responsible for a number of updates and thus reboots. But what if you wanted to go and have a fully custom environment uh, where you have just the components your application needs and nothing else? That's where Nano Server comes in. So with NanoServer, we've removed 32-bit support, we've removed the graphics stack, we've removed the Windows, the remote desktop, and WinLogon. So you have the bare minimal components. And we've also been mindful of maintaining the critical APIs while optimizing NanoServer to be literally 25 times smaller than server with the desktop. That said, while you have tiny footprint in terms of size, you can still install packages your application needs from various repositories. So you can add these packages uh, either from a local path, a UNC path, a local directory, or from the cloud. So to make this real for everyone, there's a lot of people out there who are still using server with the desktop experience. Yes. How does that compare with Nano Server? Okay, well, let's take a look. So here I've got a server with the desktop experience and PowerShell, PowerShell ISE. And so let me just show you how many processes are running. So what I'll do is I will select this, and what I'll show you is the processes running and then a string that says how many. So we've got 54 processes running. Now this machine, I've got hypervisor, so that adds another four, and then I've got PowerShell ISE. So basically you've got about 50 processes mm -hmm. running with nothing else running on server core. Okay. Or that's on server with the desktop experience. Now let's go to nano server. So I'll connect to nano server. Now having connected in, I'll run exactly the same command. And notice there were only 20. Wow. So in the past, in server with the desktop, there are 50. Here, there were only 20. That's awesome. That's a significant reduction, and, and it, but it's still giving, giving you the functionality you need. Exactly. And that translates into startup times, into reboot times. This is a peppy thing. Nice. So Nano Server by default can run things like ASP.NET, Node.js. It's, it's fully manageable, but what if, what if I want to customize it? How do I go about doing that? Yeah, you can customize by creating an image using PowerShell or desired state configuration. For instance, imagine you want a nano server to perform as a Hyper-V host. Uh, you'd add the compute package. If you wanted it to uh, serve up web applications, you'd add the IIS package. Later, you can customize an existing nano server image by adding additional packages either from local repositories or from the cloud. So can we take a look? Yeah, absolutely. So here, what I've done is, uh, again, I'm on server with the desktop. What I'll do is I will import uh, this PowerShell module. This comes with uh, Windows Server 2016 media. And then what I'll do is I'll create the image, uh, nano server image, mm -hmm. and then I'll create a VM with that VHD and then start it. Okay, so we'll get that running. Now, while that's running, let me explain what this did. This is new nano server image. Any guesses what that does? It's beyond me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's a great thing about PowerShell. You just read it, right? Yep. So new nano server image. Media path D. That's where you get the media. Yep. Uh, where's the target? Well, okay, you want it here. This is where you want the VHD to go. go. Mm -hmm. Then we want to install guest drivers. So VMs, you put guest drivers. Physical devices, you add OEM drivers. Okay. Uh, we'll give it a computer name, nano server demo. 
And then here's where we pick the packages that we want. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, the nano server IIS package. If we want to add hypervisor, we could add dash compute, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on. Okay, so now that's finished. So what I'll do is I'll now connect to that nano server VM. Mm -hmm. And again, what we did was we created the bare minimal stuff there, right? So now the question is, uh, I'd like to add some more stuff. How do you get that? Well, you get the thing is that in the in the cloud there are lots of different communities. There's uh, PowerShell communities. There's developer communities. The developer communities have their own communities. So how do you have a single common experience to get them all? And the answer is find package provider. So here, what we're doing is we're going out to the web to find package providers for the various different uh, cloud-based repositories. Mm -hmm. And you see here is one for NuGet. Here, ask us to download that. That's the basis for all of our stuff is mm -hmm. NuGet. So we install that, get the latest version. And then you see GIST provider. So you can get uh, content from GIST, from GitHub, uh, from containers. This is how we'll get containers. So imagine I wanted to get some stuff from NuGet. I'm a developer. I wanted to go get some stuff. So I'll go find out what packages are available from NuGet. And take a look at that. There's a few. Okay. There's a few. In fact, I'm going to have to stop this demo because otherwise this would just keep going on and on and on. Okay. So these are all from the community. These are all from the community, exactly. There's just a ton of them. Everything you could want is there. So let me just take one. Let's say, imagine you wanted to experiment with Node.js. Well, how would you do that? How would you do that in the past, right? Go to a search engine, type Node.js, find a gazillion links, try to find the right link, click on that link, read some documentation, decide where to download, and set the right money, blah, blah, blah. So here, you, what do you do? You say, I'd like to install a package called Node.js. And that's what you do. It's almost too simple. OK, so we're installing that. Ask you, are you sure you want to do that? And we say, yes, I'm sure I want to do that. And we're installing the Node.js package. We just found it in the cloud and got it. So now I'll CD to that. OK, I'll do a directory. There's Node.js. Now I'll create a little Node.js file. And I'll run it. So Node.js, hello.js. Hello world, nano server, and PowerShell rocks. So go. it's as simple as that. You had nano server, didn't have what you want, is out there in the cloud somewhere. You found the package provider to bring it to you, and you just use it. That's awesome. And so straight, straightforward, streamlined approach. You know, that's what we're trying to get to, is this model where you think what you want, you type it, and you get it. Awesome. So what are some of the other benefits to this lightweight approach? Yeah, let's take a look at the details. So comparing current builds to Windows Server, we've seen over 90% fewer critical updates a quarter of the number of reboots, significantly uh, smaller attack surface. Here you can see super fast, super fast setup times. I mean, 40 seconds yep. versus 19 minutes. Let me just let that sink in. 40 seconds versus 19 minutes. And it's over 25 times smaller. Nice. It's but, crazy. So it's small. Yeah. But what are some of the... What are some of the core scenarios that make most sense for nano server? Okay, so we see nano server as the future of the data center. Full stop. This is your future. Now, initially, we're focused in on two scenarios. Scenario number one, cloud, private cloud infrastructure. So that's clustered hypervisor, clustered storage, and some critical network roles. Next is as a cloud application platform. So here, this is for building the best uh, applications, small, lightweight, using containers, microservices. Right, and Mark Racinovich recently demoed Nano Server. Mark, in, Mark, Mark. In a Hyper-V <laughs> container on our containers show. Yeah, it's great. So let me show you how this works. Cool. Okay, so here what I've done is I've created a connection to the uh, VM that we just created, the Nano Server VM. Okay. And so now what I'm going to show you is a new feature of PowerShell that allows me to do remote file transfer over PowerShell remoting. So you've never had that before. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy an ASP.NET application. Is this from your developers? Wrote. Yeah, exactly. So I went and copied that, or did that, and that's on the local session, and then I'm copying it into the VM over PowerShell remoting. So you know what? This is going to take a while. Let me interrupt that and show you, do a Ju Julia Child and show you an existing system. Okay. So here is one that we already set up. So I'll connect to it. And what I've done is, because I installed IIS on that before, I've got the IIS PowerShell functions. So I'll go ahead and import that, those commandlets. 
I create a new IAS site, and he guesses what that does? I can imagine it creates a new IAS site. Oh, you are good. And There's no doubt learner. about it. Okay, and now we'll get the IP address here. And now what we'll do is we'll copy that. We'll come here to this. So HTTP. And we'll connect to that. We created a website of our ASP.NET application mm -hmm. uh, running on core CLR. Uh, and we're listening on port 8000. And voila, there's our ASP.NET application. Nice. As simple as that. A little bit more graphical than Node.js no example before. Indeed, it's much better. Nice. And, you know, uh, and again, the nice thing about the new ASP.NET model is it's just xcopy deployment. So what are some of the trade-offs with Nano Server? For, for example, no um, MSI support, graf no graphical stack, mm -hmm. no remote desktop. Yeah, so we don't really view those as trade-offs. Uh, so let's take 64-bit support. You know, uh, we've had 64-bit support for a long time, so most of your applications are already there or really should be looking for alternatives. In terms of graphical management, uh, most of the graphical management tools that you have will work against Nano Server, uh, but they'll work remotely, and that's the way you should do it. Run the GUI tool here and then manage remotely. And this is all possible because we manage everything through WMI, PowerShell, and desired state configuration. And this enables a wide ecosystem of tools like Chef, Puppet, Visual Studio deployment. And of course, we have the system center agents that work on it as well. So can you show us some examples of, of how we manage Nano Server? And in particular, what would happen if we were disconnected from Nano Server over the network? Oh yeah, great question. So basically, everyone knows about the PowerShell management. We showed a little bit about that. Uh, but we also have a simplified UI that gives you local interface we call the Nano Server Recovery Console. So here, let me connect to that. So here we're connected, gives you information about the nano server, and then down here at the bottom, you can manage the networking or the firewall. So we'll connect to the networking, pick the one NIC that we have, and here you see the details of that NIC. You can manage the IP settings, uh, the gateway, et cetera, and here we're even showing the uh, driver information, so you can enable and disable this. But we also have remote management, remote GUI management. As I mentioned, the traditional tools will continue to work with Nano Server, but now we have a new one. This is an Azure-based remote server management tool. Okay. okay, so here let's connect to the Azure portal, and this is connected to a Nano Server machine. So this is in Azure connected to a Nano Server machine running in our data center. Okay, so here it shows you all the details of the machine. Uh, we've got some monitoring, CPU, memory, network, here we'll go to all settings, and you see all the tools available to you. Identification, local admin, IP addresses. Look here, you even have the registry editor. Okay, you can manage the registry, as well as the device manager, all from a web browser running in Azure. Great stuff. This looks like an, an excellent option for those wanting to embrace a, a more modern microservices architecture with just the roles and features you need. Yep. But how do you get started? Yeah, it's easy. Just go and download the technical preview. And keep watching Microsoft Mechanics to keep apprised of the latest updates. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.